Hello and welcome to the World Beyond Belief. My name is still Paul Marco. And luckily with us today, we have Eric Kallstrom again. Uh, and he's going to talk about gang stalking. Now, I know Eric as a brilliant researcher and he's able to articulate his research and he's really been uncovering a lot having to do with the new age, deception, climate change, and now he's deep into gang stalking. And I would say he's probably one of the premier researchers looking into gang stalking. He's not only a researcher in this area, but he's also a target in this area. So that's the Eric Kallstrom that I know. Let me also let Dr. Kallstrom introduce himself. He, is a, he has quite an illustrious career before he got into full-time research. Dr. Kallstrom, welcome to the World Beyond Belief. Well, thank you, Paul, and uh, uh, Dr. Marco, actually. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, we're speaking across the hemispheres here. I'm, I'm in Crestone, Colorado. You're in, in Ecuador. Uh, but, of course, uh, your, your heart, part of your heart's still here because uh, yes. of your background in, in Colorado. But, yeah, I, uh, I really appreciate having the chance to uh, talk to you again about this subject, uh, which, which, again, is going to be on uh, gang stalking and electronic harassment. Um, we have done two interviews on that subject before, and as a result, I've gotten contacted by uh, individuals, targeted individuals, and, and perhaps some perpetrators masquerading as targeted individuals, uh, you know, and uh, have, have gotten more connected to the TI community, targeted community, individual community uh, globally. This is a huge issue. Uh, let me just give a brief background uh, of my own uh, my own life and history. Uh, I was a geography professor at California State University most recently uh, in the Central Valley of California for 22 years, retired in 2011. Uh, I was a, a physical geography professor, so uh, <clears throat> climate change and the landforms and soils and, and climatology, uh, environmental issues were, were what I taught and researched. And um, so my naturalclimatechange.org website is all about uh, the, the global warming fraud and the political push behind it, uh, and also the, the various functions that it performs for the ruling elite, one of which I think is to be cover for, for geoengineering, uh, and another one is to, of course, fund uh, global government right. uh, with the United Nations collecting all these carbon taxes, etc., uh, and we'd all have our carbon footprint and they would control our energy use, etc. This is the, the, uh, the aspiration, the long-term aspiration of the ruling elite, as this issue's been with us for almost half a century now. Um, and it won't go away. It doesn't matter how many times we disprove this, this bogus hypothesis of man-caused global warming. It doesn't matter because they want to create a new reality and uh, they, they get to dictate the terms of that. Another website that I have put together really starting about 9-11 uh, is 911nwo.com. And, uh, you know, when you're a professor for 30 years, as I was, you know, you, you sometimes learn to see behind the, the cover stories uh, to the real story. And if you don't, then you want to find out what's the real mm -hmm. story behind these cover stories. And of course, 911 also is, is a fraudulent, uh, false flag, uh, synthetic terror event mm -hmm. created by our government uh, in cooperation, certainly with other intelligence agencies around the world. In order to, uh, I have found, uh, justify all these wars in the Middle East uh, and to set up a police state, surveillance state at home uh, and around the world, as it turns out. So we've spent over a trillion dollars in these nefarious wars in the Middle East that don't benefit, uh, certainly don't benefit the people of the United States and uh, certainly create chaos and misery and murder and mayhem in those areas. Um, and we've also spent probably about the same amount of money creating this, this new uh, Gestapo police state at home in America. And gang stalking, uh, directed energy, weapon use, uh, electronic harassment is part of that. And uh, uh, so it's my 911nwo.com website that has gotten 
quite huge, which of course disproves or proves that 911 is an inside job, uh, and disproves the official narrative as being a ridiculous, uh, silly story about as silly as man caused global warming. I mean, these things make us stupid if we believe these things. If we buy into right. these outrageous lies, you know. Of course, Joseph Goebbels said, you know, you, uh, you know, a big big lie is if you repeat it enough, is more easily believed than a small lie, you know? Right. So these are the huge lies, and Big Brother is telling them to us, and we need to understand what's behind it. And, uh, of course, it turns out that if we look at history, we see a long sequence of false flag events, and uh, pre and post 9-11, and we can put it in its context, historical context, who's doing these things, and, and what is, you know, qui bono, who benefits, you know? Right. And uh, so it's out of the... Uh, 911nwo.com website that I have moved into this area of uh, my new website, which is called Gang Stalking Mind Control Cults.com. It's just, <laughs> it's not a uh, it's not a, a clever camouflage. It's right out there. This website is about gang stalking, mind control, and cults. And of course, these are all quite connected. Uh, <clears throat> and again, if you look at the historical development of these things, you know, it becomes obvious who's behind it and what the goals are. A little less obvious, uh, you know, the, the very, very high tech black technologies that are being uh, directed uh, against the American people and citizens of the world now. Um, that it would be an interesting subject uh, as well, just to go into the, 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 uh, the history of of patents and whatnot, uh, of the electronic or psychotronic weapons, uh, sometimes called soft kill, slow kill, silent kill, non-lethal weapons, um, that the military has been engaged in perfecting now for the last half century. And again, this goes right back to uh, the CIA's MK Ultra uh, mind control uh, programs, 149 sub-projects, Top, top, top secret. More secret than the Manhattan Project. But, of course, uh, it's hard to keep those kinds of secrets when so many institutions are involved. And uh, there were seven boxes of files. Uh, CIA Director Richard Helms thought he had destroyed all the files for MKUltra back in the uh, early 70s. But uh, John Marks, uh, who wrote The Search for the Manchurian Candidate, and others, uh, somebody found uh, seven boxes of uh, documents, heavily redacted, of course, uh, concerning the 149 MK Ultra subprojects in in some financial office where they weren't supposed to be. And then he got a team of State Department people to to look through those things and then put two and two together and found out, okay, this now this is referring to this kind of research and such and such a. You know, these people did it at this institution. So all of this has come out. Yeah. Um, again, it's supposed to be top secret. The FBI's COINTELPRO, counterintelligence program of the 60s and 70s, in which they killed uh, 28 Black Panthers, uh, you know, and other targeted groups in, in the United States, political activist groups, uh, some of which the CIA created, you know, like the Weathermen and, and uh, you know, the Symbionese uh, Liberation Army and things like that. The FBI then goes after these groups with these very, very sophisticated uh, harassment techniques. And, of course, this is called counterintelligence. Well, turns out this is exactly what the East German Stasi police did to their own citizens mm -hmm. uh, back, uh, you know, uh, post-World War II in the Cold War, especially in the 70s and 80s. And this, this is shown in the movie uh, The Lives of Others. And, of course, when the Berlin Wall came down and the East German government crumbled and Germany reunited, then the East German government, or what was left of it, opened up the files and turns out the Stasi police, which is their secret secret police, uh, uh, had kept files on everybody, detailed, just like our NSA does, right. uh, on every American. And, uh, and those files were opened up. And so right at the end of this movie, uh, The Lives of Others, you, you see the, you know, the, the special features. And you know, they, they actually show you the, the huge building with all these paper files at that time. And people were able to then go and find out what the government, you know, had had uh, written about them in these right. in these ultra secret files. 
Well, this is this is uh, you know in the in the design of the Department of Homeland Security, which of course is post 9/11 operation. Uh, now with 225,000 employees and a 40 billion dollar annual budget, uh, they got Stasi officers sure. as well as Nazi officers, Gestapo officers, to help them design the Department of Homeland Security. So, you know, who is behind the gang stalking? Well, it is the CIA, the NSA, the FBI, Department of Homeland Security, and all their fusion centers and 78 fusion centers in every state uh, in which, you know, local law enforcement is all connected up with these guys. And uh, these huge budgets, $60 billion a year for the FBI, uh, uh, $42 billion of which goes to... Uh, uh, outsourcing to corporate uh, entities, you know. So you have now the corporatocracy, the private sector, uh, doing this as well. So you got you got NSA, CIA, FBI, DHS, um, and then the all the Department of Defense intelligence agencies. They're all involved in this. Right. And the technology is coming from these sectors. And again, that would be a whole nother show. You know, let's talk about where these these high, you know, these directed energy weapons when they were developed, who who actually has the patent on them, and then you know what's the history? These are black ops, these yeah. are black projects, and now it's being turned loose on the American people um, to silently harass and to neutralize, discredit, actually murder, take out, sure. eliminate um, targeted individuals, and uh, uh, so this is this is very dark. I mean this is. If, if you look at it, uh, um, well, let, let me just give a couple books, several books for people. I, I, I really want to share this information with people who, who may be targeted individuals and reach out to the people who are not targeted so that they might see what, our, what has happened right. to our, our, our Bill of Rights in this country. You know, basically these programs eliminate the fourth, sixth, and fourth, fifth, and sixth amendments. As well as your freedom of speech, they they surveil you, uh, et cetera. So our our whole your nation, I think, is at stake with these programs because these are, as we said in our last interview, weapon systems that can be scaled up and scaled back. Could create a huge holocaust around the world with these these very programs. It's a silent war. It's an invisible war because directed energy weapons, of course, are uh, are are not visible. And so uh, when they talk about soft kill, slow kill, silent kill, non-lethal weapons, um, what we're talking about is microwave, milliwave, uh, uh, scalar waves, uh, silent sound, sonar. Uh, uh, they're, they're coming from satellites. They're coming from Gwen Towers. They're coming from HARP, the High Active Frequency Aurora Research okay. Project in Alaska, and the other 20-some ionospheric heaters around the world, HARP being the largest. Uh, and they come from portable devices. Uh, when, uh, you, they have portable microwave devices, uh, radio frequency devices that, that can beam directly into the targeted individual's home, go through the walls, uh, radar that goes through the walls, etc. Uh, they... Doctor, let me give you these books because I, I think education is the very, very best um, antidote. It's the very best protection weapon for targeted individuals. The more you know about it, the less uh, you're likely to be, uh, well, eliminated, killed, isolated, right. um, taken out uh, through a, a whole series of uh, it's psychological warfare. It's directed energy warfare. So the books that I that I think are very solid, and that I would recommend. Uh, gosh, I wish it was in every library in 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 the world. Dr. John Hall is an anesthesiologist out of uh, San Antonio, Texas, and and a targeted individual. He's written two books: uh, 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 Satellite Terrorism, a New Breed of Something or Other. That's his first. The second one is the one I'm recommending, and that is. Uh, um, guinea pigs, technologies of control. And in this book, he identifies six phases of targeting that all people who are targeted will go through. And this is a protocol now being established around the world. First of all, selection. And you can be put on these terrorist watch lists or whatever they want to call them, notification lists at first in Britain, okay. by anybody. 
In other words, if there's somebody in your community who doesn't like you and they have some contacts with the NSA or local police, they can report to you on the experiments on people of all different races and colors and ages. And so you get on the list. You are now in the program until death. Very rarely does somebody get out of the program. So they will continue to harass you until death. Okay, selection is the first. Surveillance is the second. And this can take two or three years or more. Uh, ideally, the target does not know this is happening. And I think this is true. I think most targets don't even know they're being targeted, period. Uh, but, yeah, surveillance is the second. And they'll you know break into your homes and they'll hack your emails and they'll do all kinds of things, hack your phones, et cetera. The third one and fourth one go together. And that, that's the gang stalking, sometimes called organized stalking, on a neighborhood watch groups and vigilante uh, volunteer police and, and again by all these spy groups. So we have spies all over the place being paid in this country to do this. And I, I'm toying now with trying to figure out what the numbers are, but it must be in the millions in America, people who are actually hearing or being told person and potentially a criminal and maybe a pedophile, maybe a prostitute. They lie to them and say, okay, this person is, is uh, we don't quite have enough on them yet, but we want to, we have an investigation underway and the, the, the local cop will come up to this uh, potential perpetrator and, and show them a file with your picture on it and tell them a bunch of lies. And then say, we need your help, you know, and by the way, we'll pay you. You know, $100, for instance, just to call in a location. And so they get their little cell phone app, and there's all this list of photos, you know, in your area. And then the Fusion Center will have, you know, coordinated the, the, the local police and the vigilante neighborhood watch people, et cetera, and whatever NSA, CIA, CIA spies are actually on hand, and then again, the corporate sector, the private sector. And they'll, they'll say, okay, we, we want you to do this and such, you know. And then this can involve all kinds of street theater and gaslighting and harassment. And, uh, again, the idea is to make the individual very, very afraid and paranoid because now all of a sudden these total strangers are making your life miserable in a, in a very systematic and coordinated way. Again, using protocols that go back to the East German Stasi. And that goes back to the Soviet Cheka, you know, the, the, the secret police of the Soviet right. Union. This is how the power elite controls the street level. In other words, if there are dissidents and whistleblowers and people that aren't getting along with the program, you can take them out this way using other people at street level. And they will, as Karen Stewart, ex-whistleblower, NSA whistleblower and current TI, says they're drilling down into a criminal class and they're offering them money too. So stocking is the third phase, and along with that go defamation. These people will then spread out into your community, and they'll get everybody, they'll tell them all kinds of lies about you so that, you know, nobody wants to, you know, have any contact with you at all. So then you become isolated. Right. And, of course, that's the point, is to isolate the target. Um, and to, you know, you lose your job, you lose your friends, you lose your home. Ultimately, they want to get you out on the street where, where they can either kill you or, or maybe you're so depressed you commit suicide. And again, this program goes right back to the East German Stasi secret police and, and the Soviet Cheka. Um, and, uh, and it utilizes, and then the next fifth phase, attack, directed energy weapons. And this uses... Now, when the MK Ultra, 149 subprojects of MK Ultra, and I'm using that as a blanket because there were many, many mind control projects of the CIA, and the and the DIA and the Department of Defense. You know, there was Bluebird, Artichoke, uh, MK Search, MK Off, and MK Blah Blah Blah. You know, I mean, there's probably hundreds. Um, and again, these would have involved some of our top scientists uh, in you know with black budget uh, programs. And uh, now we're talking about the use of directed energy weapons against the individual, uh, uh, including voice to skull technologies where they ac actually can insert voices in the person's head and say, you know, I'm God. I want you to go kill your mother. 
right. or kill your father or go to this schoolyard and start shooting. Well, guess how this can be applied? Right. The shooters in 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 uh, in America, you know, which is course causing, oh, it's the terrorists. Oh, it's the Muslim terrorists. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to go fight some more wars in the Middle East. Well, these voices, uh, you know, this is coming from 1974 technology out of the CIA's own MK Ultra program. Voice to Skull Technology, or V2K. It was used in the Manchurian channelers of, of Eileen Cady of the Findhorn cult in, in Britain, where she's supposedly downloading this information from God and writing these books, several books, uh, which, of course, are New Age books, uh, as well as um, The Course in Miracles, by Helen Shookman yeah. at Columbia University, a PhD psychologist who was channeling a being. It said it was Jesus. So, <laughs> so now the CIA, you know, they get to they get to play God, and they get to play the devil. They get to play any role they want. You know, they say, well, you know, this is the devil speaking. Kill yourself. You know, and uh, they can do this. The technology is such they can do this where. What you hear, and it's actually a silent sound. It's it's, not, it's going right through your your auditory apparatus, right into your skull, and you think it's a voice. Can be can be your own voice, in which case you think it's your own thoughts, right. or it can be another voice, in which case you think somebody's talking to you. And uh, so the, the uh, we're still on the six six uh, stages of the targeting, mm -hmm. and we're in the directed energy weapons, and and of course this goes on and on. But then the last phase is monitoring. So they they want to monitor and see how you're doing. So you know we're we're talking about a technocracy here, a a scientific dictatorship, a big brother now, um, but with with malevolence. I mean, you know, you you couldn't ask for a more satanic program than than gang stalking. Uh, and yet, you know, all these scientists and local vigilantes who think that they're you know somehow helping society. Right. By targeting, you know, their fellow fellow people, you know, I mean, in, in 2003, an article came out, I think it was the New York Times, uh, in which the DHS, Department of Homeland Security, said we'd like to get to a place where one out of three Americans are going to be used as citizen spies. Right. <laughs> That's 100 million, That's you right. know, and and uh, and of course, East, East Germany's Stasi had one out of six people. One out of six people right. were citizen spies. Well, this is how you destroy a society. Sure. Um, uh, you know, who wants to live in a world like that where everybody's a rat and a stooge and a, you know, a, 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 you know, a monster? These people, you know, obviously don't care about their fellow citizens' first, fourth, fifth, and sixth amendment rights, you right. know, because they're getting off on whatever, getting a little money or getting prestige by helping the local cops. So it's it in effect it makes us all evil. It uh -huh. destroys us all. And that gets into the second book that I'd like to recommend which is by AK Forwood, a British guy who uh, I believe was on the receiving end and and perhaps also somewhat on the on the uh, per perpetrating end of the system. It's called Gang Stalking and Mind Control: Citizen Spy Networks and the Destruction of Society. Um that that is a very good book very short and he talks about the connection again with mind control and he says satanism and mind control are, go hand in hand sure and so what we're really dealing with is a very very satanic system um from top to bottom and he traces it right up to the illuminati satanic sure. uh, bloodline families who of course are always in the background right but they are ultimately the puppet masters of the system and they're the ones who want to reach down and, and destroy the individuals at ground level who maybe aren't already going to hell. Right. <laughs> in other words, they, I think at some level there is a spiritual thing going on in this planet, and, and the powers that be kind of know who's, who's kind of headed for where. Right. And uh, if you're already going to hell, they probably won't bother you. They'll probably <laughs> use you as a perp, you know. Yeah, they will. <laughs> but if you're not, they want to make you so miserable that you, you know, or you might kill yourself and then you will right. go to hell. And, and this is exactly what a, what a TI from Portugal wrote to me the other day when he shared with me his experiences. And I put that on my gangstalkingmindcontrolcults.com website under TI statements. Uh -huh. 
And it's very interesting. I mean, I, I would hope to get more and more of these and build up an archive uh, because right now this is a top secret program. Most Americans and people of the world would deny that it's occurring. Um, and, uh, you know, education is, is really what we need. So that's the second book, uh, Gang Stalking and Mind Control. The third book is, a, uh, is, is actually a book of fiction by a famous black author named Gloria Naylor who, uh, you know, enjoyed some commercial success, but then got gang stalked uh, because she ran afoul of one of her neighbors whose brother was very high in the NSA. And her neighbor reported him to her brother, and this became a huge operation then to take her down. The name of the book is 1996, which was the year, the first year of her targeting. And the book came out in 2005. And to complete the story, she died of a heart attack, perhaps Ooh. induced, this year. Uh, of course, directed energy weapons can target your organs, and they can cause uh, all kinds of pseudo symptoms. But although they're called non-lethal weapons, if you scale it up to 24/7 exposure, they can certainly take you sure, out you with, better. you know, cancer, with uh, heart attack, all kinds of things. So uh, anyway, Gloria Naylor's book, 1996, is short. It's a very easy read. She, this black woman, really, you know, figured it out. I think, and did a wonderful job. And she exposes the technology involved in the NSA, NSA's role, and the local uh, citizens' role, et cetera. And then at the end, in her uh, her afterwards, she's got a lawsuit. Uh, John Sinclair Aque, A-K-W-E-I, versus the NSA, 1992, when he oh. laid this out. Okay, this is what the NSA is doing. This is the technologies they're using, you know, remote neural monitoring and and uh, brain to brain link ups, brain brain to computer hookups that they, they, they can use EEG heterodyning to to um, which which recognizes the actual signature of your own brain waves. So they, they don't need implants anymore. Even as of 1992, they're able to um detect each individual's different brain signature with this EEG, electroencephalogram, heterodyning uh, technology. And therefore, they can track you anywhere you go around the world with the satellites. So uh, uh, John St. Clair Ackway's web, uh, lawsuit with the NSA was thrown out of court, of course, by a sure. corrupt judge. Uh, and... Uh, Never got heard, but nevertheless, he, he wrote this down, and it is in the back of her book. And you people can go online. People can go onto my website. I've got it printed out there. Uh -huh. uh, and then the fourth book that I'd like to recommend to people, and these are all short books, and they should be in every library and every TI's library, is by a guy named Marshall Thomas. And it's called Monarch, colon, The New Phoenix Program. Well, some of us who are of the Vietnam War era might remember, you know, uh, Lieutenant Callie and the Melee Massacre, you know, and how this caused a big stir in the press in, in America. Well, it turns out what happened with Lieutenant Callie and the Melee Massacre was, was standard operating procedure uh, uh, for the Phoenix program, which was designed in Washington, D.C. by people like Robert Comer. Um, and uh, it's to take out the civilian support, civilian, civilian supporters for the Viet Cong. So the CIA would give these lists of individuals that might, you know, that they might suspect. Uh, and then the, the military would go, you know, wipe out these people. And, and uh, of course, sometimes it's very difficult to go into a village and, and say, well, you know, where's this guy? And, and after a while, the Vietnamese realize, oh, well... You know, how do, how do I get us? How do I get out of this? Well, I'll say, well, that guy's over there. And and it might not have been that guy. It might have been somebody they didn't like. And then right. the military goes and, you know, wipes out the village that that guy's in. So there's an it almost indiscriminate. It supposedly killed, uh, you know, some 20 to 50,000 civilians in a very horrific way. But the point is that uh, the author, Marshall Thomas, believes that the gang stalking program in the United States is kind of our equivalent of that. In other words, we get a list, then we get the, uh, and are civilians, and most of them are innocent of any wrongdoing, um, and then we go after them in covert ways. 
We send our, you know, all these different uh, agencies after them with protocols, and uh, we try to destroy their lives. Uh, you know, it's it's a terminal experiment. This is the terms that they use in the MK Ultra. Okay, we're the psychologist, and we need our psychiatrist, or we're the researcher at the at the CIA, and 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 we need to find out if this particular uh, weapon or system is going to, what effect it's going to have. We have to be able to take the subject yeah. up to up to uh, uh, death. Uh, maybe it won't go to death, but maybe it will. We call it a terminal experiment. We'll have our safe house. We'll take them out into the countryside in Germany or whatever, you know, or some other place. And uh, so this is all done based, you know, back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And... Uh, and then, of course, they had the the problem of uh, disposal, disposal of the the right. corpse that they killed, you know. And of course, they use these these terms, you know, right. you know, collateral damage, disposal, terminal experiment, you know, as if human beings are flies. You yeah. Know? And and that's the mentality of these monsters. These are psychopaths of the highest degree, and we've got their names. I mean, in 2012, I wrote a. It took me a year. It was like going into the ninth circle of hell of Dante's Inferno, right. and I and I wrote uh, the article "Mind Control: History and Applications," and you know, being a geography professor, I didn't know anything about this really, and most people don't, and all this is top secret stuff. But after I wrote that, and you know, doing research out of books and off the internet, uh, when it's very well referenced, uh, I understood that Satan is alive in the world. Right. You know, these, these, this is about as evil as you can get. You are with, you know, you're doing something very satanic when you try to take people's free will and you try to control them against their will. And yet that is the opening sentence of what MKUltra is about. We want to find ways to control others to do our bidding, even if it, if it is against their self-interest. So we'll set, you know, we'll, we'll get somebody uh, with a split person that will split their personality through trauma, trauma-based torture, often of children. That's the best. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll create dissociative identity disorder. We will put amnesia barriers between the subal subalter personalities, right. and then we'll program this individual or this alter to have this identity. And a trigger word will take the whole personality structure. We'll move it over to this subpersonality who's now trained killer, we'll ask them to do the job uh, that we have in mind, and then we'll trigger them back to their front personality or whatever, uh, and they'll have no memory of it. Well, this is the perfect crime, isn't it? Yes. Because the, even the individual who did the crime doesn't remember they did it. And this was the CIA's thinking back in 1953. Well, uh, Anyway, this this is all explained in in my article and in in many of in the books that I that I recommend. I could go list them right now off the top of my head. There's so many good ones. Uh, Walter Boat's uh, book uh, um, about uh, the cryptocracy mind control it came out in '67. Uh, it was a pioneering work. Uh, again, John Mark's book on on uh, the search for the Manchurian candidate and many many others. Um, uh, We'll talk about these sorts of things. Alberelli's book, A Terrible Mistake, The Killing of, of uh, uh, Olson, uh, Frank Olson, I believe, uh, who was a CIA or a, a, a military researcher who, who just got a weak stomach when, when he was uh, confronted with the whole terminal experiment at the safe house in Germany and said, hey, I don't want to play anymore. Then his fellow monsters, uh, Sidney Gottlieb, notably, who was... Uh, head of the technical services staff at the CIA that ran the whole MKUltra program, uh, and a couple of the psychiatrists uh, gave him LSD because that was one of the things they were researching. And uh, then the story is, uh, you know, he flipped out and jumped out the window of, you know, eight, ten-story building and, and died on the sidewalk. His son later, 20 years later, exhumed the body and found he'd been hit on the back of the head with a hammer. And so obviously one of his fellow CIA people did him in and then threw him out the window and made it look like he jumped out the window. But uh, so this is the kind of operation and people we're dealing with. We're dealing with operations. Gloria Naylor's book makes it very clear that, you know, this thing, which was initiated by, you know, a neighbor that she had a problem with 
or a perceived problem, reporting it to her brother in the NSA. Now she's on the list. Now it's an operation. So yeah. how are we going to drive her crazy? How are we going to kill her? How are we going to get her to move? How are we going? And now you bring in all these different sectors. You know, this one was a four uh, four super hacker teenagers. You know, almost uh, trying to harass her to death. And and uh, this becomes then a game. And now you take all the spy protocols that the NSA and the CIA have been using against enemy agents. Right. for decades, and you apply them to an innocent American citizen who has no idea that they're on this list, such as Gloria Naylor, who was a black woman author trying to write a book on a little peaceful island, uh, on a barrier island next to, you know, off North Carolina coast. <laughs> but she's figured it out. See, I mean, the human mind is, is uh, we're, we're not all stupid. And uh, we're going to win. We're going to beat these guys. Uh, let, let me let me stop there. Uh, I, you know, I know you have uh, an interest in this too, uh, Paul. So let me stop there and take a take a breath and let me see where you would like to like to go with this. Okay, I, I've got a bunch of stuff written down. First of all, about a year and a half ago, maybe eighteen months ago, we interviewed a woman named Charlie Seven, who was gang stalked and. Uh, we have a real detailed uh, account of what happened to her. She was, she invented these magnificent uh, ways to incorporate fitness into TV shows. Uh, Dancing with the Stars was one of her creations. And what they did was they stole her creations. They wouldn't allow her to get any money for it. Actually, she sued them and won, but they still wouldn't pay her. And they've gang stalked her ever since. Uh, and uh, I'll send you those interviews. And anybody who's interested could see them on Pinecone Utopia. Their interviews with seven. And we'll send that. Second thing I wrote, I wrote down is if you're in the United States and you have a public library near you, take this list of books to your public library and say you would like to have them order this. Now, when we lived in the United States, which was five years ago, they would do this. They would order, they're looking for books to buy. And these books are critically important books. And uh, I think that's, that's a really good strategy. What we can do right now is get them in all the libraries. Um, another thing I wrote down was, uh, uh, you know, this Pizzagate thing that's happening now. And all this stuff is coming about, about the satanic connections with the elite and pedophilia. Pedophilia almost looks like a limited hangout now. When you dig down deeper and find out what they're doing to everyday citizens. And I guess the, the biggest thing that, that occurs to me is, you know, if you look at guys like uh, Henry Kissinger or George Soros and these these old shriveled up prunes of people, Satanists, that are perpetrating this stuff, well, just look at them. They're, they're really pitiful guys trying to keep themselves alive by very nefarious means, I'm sure. Who's working these programs are us. The people who are uh, working for the uh, NSA, FBI, the people who are out in the streets watching for uh, Eric Karlstrom to come by so they can uh, call in his location, they're the people that are doing this. We're doing it to ourselves. We've got to stop doing this. That's the same as uh, global warming. The only reason global warming still has any traction at all, it's been proven false. If you look at the people that are involved with it, it's obvious they're the ones that are screwing us on every other level. They're the Satanists. The only people that give this legs are people, are people that are still buying this, that are still supporting this. Honestly, if they ever get the carbon tax, it'll be because of people, not because of Soros and Kissinger and Clintons and all those guys. So anyway, as you were going through this, I kept thinking, we're doing this. You know, we're, we're the ones that are doing this. And anyway, That's those a are good my insight. comments. That's a very good insight. And of course, uh, you know, ultimately this program leads to uh, 
uh, a cybernetic hive mind. What, yes. what they ultimately want to do is control all human beings' uh, mental processes to the point where there is no more free will, let alone the ten, you know, uh, uh, Bill of Rights uh, rights that we have. Uh, forget that. I mean, they they want to they want to destroy free will, and they want to turn us into basically robot slaves, and that's what the these programs have the capacity to do. Uh, so really, we're we're kind of drawn. <laughs> you and I, and and all the other TIs, and anybody who's kind of half awake anymore are going to have to draw a line in the sand and say, "Listen, you cannot do exactly. this. Humanity is at stake." Uh, what they want to do is create a, a, a race of of cyborg slaves right. uh, to serve them, and or of course destroy. Uh, genocide the rest. And of course, this program, this this uh, military weapons system of gang stalking, uh, electronic harassment can be scaled up to a huge scale to right. where it would, would cause a mass genocide uh, of human beings. So um, I know of no, no, uh, you know, subject that that requires more um, uh, commitment, really, for myself. And I've looked right. at a number of these subjects, you know, this this is the way it's taken me a while. I you know, one of the reasons I haven't written a book about uh, you know the global warming fraud, which would be right up my alley, or the 911 fraud, which I now have way more material. I've got enough for five books or more, but I I didn't stop at any of these subjects because I wanted to keep moving into the next one to see how it all fit together. Right. And this is the one that has the immediate potential of of. Uh, and of course, the North American Union, uh, you know, regionalism, and all these United Nations, nefarious United Nations plans—they all fit together, as you say. It's all—it's right. all orchestrated by the same psychopaths, uh, Satanists, uh, pedophiles, etc. Uh, but but this one is is going on now in a, a t highly top secret black project, again called we call gang stalking and and uh, electronic harassment, and uh, people are being suicided, killed by exactly. artificially induced heart attacks. So right now it's a crime against humanity, but it has the potential of being scaled up to be a massive uh, genocide event. And I don't doubt that the psychopaths at the top uh, uh, w w would want to do that, you know? So, and I think your point is excellent that we're doing it to ourselves. And and many of us have a free will and we, we see what's going on, so you get, whistleblowers, uh, NSA whistleblower Karen Stewart doing interviews with Jeff Rents, and I've got it on my website and transcribed it. Right. Um, and you've got ex-FBI agent Mike German, you know, who was in the counterterrorism branch between 1988 and 2004, who's now working with the ACLU trying to neutralize these programs and expose them. And you got Dr. Robert Duncan, uh, who is... Uh, ex-CIA author of uh, Project Soul Catcher, uh, who is exposing these things. Uh, you've got, you know, uh, people at the DHS, Department of Homeland Security, quitting en masse because they can't stand what they're doing. So to, you know, uh, the morale is extremely low at DHS, even though the funding is extremely right. high. Uh, but then they've got their little tentacle fingers into all our you know, county commissioners, right. boardrooms, and they're giving grant money uh, so that our local police then can uh, can uh, t uh, you know do these harassments. Right. Um, so you know, to me, the the program has become more and more transparent since you and I did our first interview, right. maybe uh, on this, maybe uh, uh, or about half a year ago. Right. And uh, you know that that interview is on the internet, and people can watch it on YouTube. But uh, now I've got this website about it, and I know a lot more about it than I did then. Right. Um, well, so, I, yeah. Go ahead. I think you. I think you've picked the right topic. I mean, if you go back, uh, certainly the New Age uh, deception is is often running, but the uh, the climate change thing, I think it's losing power. I mean, they've been, as you said, they've been trying to do this for fifty years plus, and they still can't get it off the ground, even though they're. They're faking climate change catastrophes uh, up in the United States. You're going to have the worst winter, supposedly, coming up that you've ever seen. Uh, but it's not global warming. It's just a harp 
intervention. So I think you've picked the right one. Go ahead. Yeah, well, thanks. I, I agree. I mean, yeah, the, with the climate change thing, I mean, people don't understand the long-term dynamics of climate change. we got right. four and a half billion year history on this planet, right. you know. And uh, for 80% of that time, the climate, the temperature was significantly warmer, uh, you know, by 8 to 10 degrees centigrade on average, and there was no ice. Right. And so, uh, and of course, the thing they don't tell people is warming is good. People right. live longer. You know, right. growing seasons, seasons are longer. Animals and plants thrive, get bigger. Um, the CO but yeah, so, <laughs> so the natural climate change is there, but now we have geoengineering. Right. So the, the, the man-caused global warming is in many ways a, a cover story right. for what the military's been doing since World War II, which is weather modification, weather warfare, engineering the planet. Right. to become weaponized. They're weaponizing everything. That's These right. people have one track mind, which That's is right. take over the world, kill people. Um, and uh, of course they've weaponized psychology with all this mind control. They've weaponized anthropology and sociology as well. They've weaponized, of course, uh, uh, physics and, and the high tech uh, uh, directed energy weapons. So. This is where the money comes from. This is where the money is is directed, and that's where the results are are are, are uh, produced. Again, it's coming from the people at the top with the money. And right. again, we're going to Wall Street. We're going to the city of London. We're going to the international financial community, uh, the corporatocracy, et cetera, that really runs the world and wants wants everything. You know, doesn't need seven billion people because that doesn't fit their agenda. Right. Free will does not fit their agenda of, of those 7 billion people. So uh, what people need to wake up to very quickly is, of course, this is just the really dark spear tip of the system to take out dissidents and whistleblowers and whoever they want. But then they've got this enormous propaganda system uh, through the media, through education. And uh, this is to clean up you know, the people that didn't get swept along with, with all the other propaganda, um, entertainment, uh, media, et cetera, education. These, these people have totalitarian aims, um, and they are satanically uh, inspired. Now, I'm going to throw it back to you, Paul, but then after that, I'd like to do a little speculating on, on kind of the, the long-term plan of Big Brother here. But uh, yeah, whatever you've got there uh, first. Okay. I just had a couple <laughs> ideas. One is the people who are working this program have to realize they're on the wrong side of the coin here. Uh, there's the satanic side and then there's the human side. You don't want to be on the satanic side. And if you look at what's going on, uh, actually the whole control system is really going through a rough time right now. I mean, the propaganda system uh, is breaking down. People are waking up. That's a, that's a reality. Uh, the, if we would have done this program five years ago, it would have been left off of the Internet. I mean, now we get response. You get response, uh, Dr. Carlson. We get responses about this. Yes, I'm being targeted. How can I find out more? It's, it's a reality, and that's falling apart. The mainstream media, of course, no, doesn't have any credibility. They're trying to switch. They're trying to replace it with other alternative medias like that, like uh, Alex Jones, as a, yes. uh, as a, you know, he's going to fill in the, the, the thing now. But we're in front of it. The people that are awake are in front of it. Uh, the EU system, I think Italy is going to be the final nail in that coffin. And we're going to see that thing come right apart. Now, the, with the Muslim problem, that's going to be another thing. But people can solve problems. People can solve problems if they're not under the control of this nasty satanic system. Uh, and remember that this whole thing is satanically inspired. I mean, if, if, they, if there's a story about relating to, uh, what, spirit cooking or pedophilia, you got to believe it because these people run on this is part of their system. This is part of their power. Uh, so you, you can't deny that that's really happening. Uh, 
So I just want to emphasize the people that are involved in this program, and I'm talking to people who work for the NSA, the FBI, uh, Department of Homeland Security. You're on the raw. You're on the losing side. Wake up. You're humanity. You are humanity. So anyway, that was my little soapbox. Now, <laughs> thank well, you very okay, much. Well, okay, let me, Eric. Paul. Let me Go make ahead. two two uh, kind of. Uh, observations here. The first one, uh, one of the books that I've uh, enjoyed kind of mining a little bit is, is uh, Fletcher Prouty's book, The Secret Team, The CIA and Its Allies in Control of the United States and the World. <laughs> Came out in 1973. And uh, he was the uh, U.S. Army colonel that was the liaison for eight years between the CIA black operations uh, and the army and the military. And he would have to kind of go back and forth. So he was a total insider. And, you know, he, in the movie JFK by Oliver Stone, he plays kind of the role of, uh, of Deep Throat in there, you know, telling the, the, the reporters what's really happening. Uh, so Fletcher Prouty is, uh, this is a, a book worth reading. And uh, he's talking about the CIA and their allies, again, NSA, FBI, et cetera. He says, this is the fundamental game of the secret team. They have this power because they control secrecy and secret intelligence and because they have the ability to take advantage of the most modern communication system in the world, of global transportation systems, of quantities of weapons of all kinds. In other words, they're backed up by the entire U.S. military. And when needed, the full support of the worldwide U.S. military supporting base structure. They can use the finest intelligence system in the world, and most importantly, they have been able to operate under the canopy of an assumed ever-present enemy called communism. So anti-communism then became the, the justification then for their counterinsurgency efforts in 60 countries as of 1973 when Fletcher Prouty wrote the book. So they are destabilizing these countries, which are not communist, but they'll find different factions or they'll create different factions in that country. And then they'll uh, accentuate the, the differences. They'll pump in arms on both sides. They'll set up a, you know, a terrorist civil uh, event or set up a civil war, assassination coups, etc. And uh, so, uh, then he says, it will be interesting to see what enemy develops in the years ahead. It appears that UFOs and aliens are being primed to fulfill that role for the future. To top all of this, there is the fact, blah, blah, blah. Well, <clears throat> what we know is what, what replaced communism, anti-communism, as a modus operandi for the Cold War, anti-terrorism. So uh -huh. just as we created and funded the, the communists, uh -huh. and that can be that can be documented. Yes. Uh, you know the international bankers and and uh, the the world's elite created communism as a foil to capitalism. So you now have a conflict, and then yeah, exactly in the Hegelian dialectic. Yep. And then here I'll I'll read this sentence from you. Uh, he's he's talking now about Maxwell Taylor, who is. Uh, um, a uh, w was one of the new generals during the Vietnam War. He said Maxwell Taylor had become a leader of the new military force of response, of reaction, and of undercover activity, special operations forces, sure. all summed up in the newly coined word counterinsurgency. Okay, counterinsurgency, right. what's the difference between that and counterterrorism? There's no difference. No. So we've, we've gone, and this is what they've always done. So yeah. it wasn't a great leap of imagination for those CIA guys when the wall came down in Berlin and the Soviets then, you know, split up their empire and now it's Russia and all their other stands, et cetera. It wasn't a great uh, leap. It wasn't a great leap then to, to uh, find this new enemy. You always have to create it, of course, of terrorism. And the nice thing about it uh, is that uh, uh, now anybody anywhere can be targeted and labeled as a terrorist. So, uh, in fact, individuals like myself, who are gang stalked, are generally put on terrorist watch lists. So this this confusion uh, with the average idiot, I mean citizen. Right. <laughs> I mean, I get people coming up to me at coffee shops, you know, telling me how bad terrorism is. Well, I don't know that person. So obviously somebody told them that I was a terrorist, you know, and stop there, you know, and spy on this guy or whatever. Right. And... Uh, uh, 
you know, I've had so many of these uh, encounters now that I'm a TIA, TI, um, that I, I, and of course, I have every stake in understanding what's going on. Um, so communism morphs into terrorism. Now, it's been documented that during the Cold War, which was this kind of trumped up conflict between, uh, you know, capitalism and communism, wherever it might be, uh, uh, the U.S. government spent $9 trillion on the military-industrial complex, which more properly should be called the intelligence sure. military-industrial-congressional complex. Uh, and that was more than all other sectors of our economy put together. $9 trillion. Jeez. So you wonder where these people get the power. Right. They've got, they've got all the money. And, of course, Ike's speech in 1961 warning us about the military-industrial right. complex and the, the threats to our liberties was, was right on. Go look at that. If you're, if you're watching this, go online and watch uh, the farewell address of uh, President uh, Eisenhower, 1961. Right. Well, he missed part of it. <laughs> he forgot the intelligence at the beginning of the military-industrial right. complex because it is the CIA and its allies that are controlling the whole system. Now, let me, uh, let me say, uh, go into a subject that I think is uh, maybe a little more speculative, but m maybe a little more important. Um, when I did my uh, one-year research on mind, star uh, mind control uh, applications in history, history and applications, which was like going into the ninth circle of hell right there with Satan, um, one of the things I found out was that uh, there was a speech called the Green Bomb speech given by a psychiatrist by the name of Dr. Corydon Hammond in 1992. And he was at a psychology conference back in Virginia. And he reported the satanic ritual abuse programming was going on, going on throughout the world in all cities and countries. That was 1992. Okay. So this is not a new problem. Uh, he also said based on his work with these victims, they share a common internal mental structure. And they remember the same programmers, trainers, and handlers. They will remember, for instance, Dr. Green. Yeah. Or Joseph Mengele, or Dr. White. There's a whole series of these guys, but Mengele and Green are probably the most important ones. Now, that's for sure. I mean, that's coming out of the psychologists who, who've done the research on this. Now, let me move over to the Christian pastors who've done this from a slightly different point of view. Right. Doug Riggs, Christian pastor, Preston Bailey, also been working with the victims of the satanic ritual abuse programming, of which MK Ultra is a part, because this goes right back to the Illuminati families for the last, you know, 5,000 years or whatever. It comes right out of the Nazis because some of our top, mind programmers where Mengele and Dr. Green coming sure. from Germany through Operation Paperclip, Paperclip. with 9,000 other scientists into this country in another secret operation, right. which gave us then our basis for continuing the Nazi mind control experiments here under MKUltra, et cetera, right. and our space program with Werner von Braun, et cetera. So right. that gave us the basis of NASA and NASA. It, it formed a huge part of our CIA, all these German spies like the Galen organization, right. which was imported whole, whole cloth into our CIA as it's being formed in 1950, when the late 40s. Yeah. But anyway, okay, so here's what Doug Riggs and Preston Bailey say. They say, now here, this is getting a little bit out there, but like you say, things have changed in the last five years. SRA, according to these pastors, and they have worked now for decades with the victims of these satanic ritual abuse programs to try to restore their integrity and to try to deprogram them. And they've had some success with Christian exorcism, et cetera, of the different subalters. But they say SRA, satanic ritual abuse, is the framework for a, quote, global hybrid breeding program, which they say is sometimes called the Nephilim or the Genesis Project. And the goal of the project, they say, is to create para-humans or hybrids of humans and, quote, fallen angels, i.e. demons. This new species, then, is sometimes referred to in the New Age literature and by New Ages like Barbara Marx Hubbard as 
Homo Noetica, the new man, or Homo Novus, the new man. And these are just other names for the Nazi master race. And this is what Hitler was all about. This is why they did all that stuff. They wanted to create a Superman, uh -huh. which would be a hybrid now of humans and these fallen angels, or perhaps humans and, uh, and computers and machines. You know, all that stuff, I guess. According to Doug Riggs and Preston Bailey, there are such people in the planet, on the planet with us now. And that they are, these are actually, they say, reptilian beings that look identical to people. Okay, so now we're getting out there. But you've heard a lot about reptilians, right? Right. I think you read a lot about that and you see a lot about that on the internet. So in addition to functioning, Homo Noetica can function as a military weapons platform. These could be a large number of the perps. Right. A large number of the perps could be these victims of spiritual abuse who have triggered to do this and such at this moment, and then go right back into their uh, previous or other identity and forget all about what they just did. So, in other words, they they are unwitting participants. Now, people like uh, Dr. Colin Ross, who wrote a book called Project Bluebird talks about all these, you know, MK Ultra experiments and the sub projects. He estimates there are probably 10 million victims of SRA and MK Ultra in America. In America alone and this is a worldwide project. So, you know, who knows? Uh, other estimates, you know, by Russ Dizdar, you know, might be a little bit more. Other estimates might be a little bit less. But okay, for the Christian theology gave you my speculation that there might be a connection between these victims of, of MK Ultra and SRA who are programmed, who are sleepers, who can be used then for any function, many functions, and the gang stalking program worldwide. In other words, they could be enlisted as perps. You wouldn't even have to pay them. You know, they'd just do it because, right. of course, all you have to do is if you have to whatever the trigger word, and that could be done with directed energy as well. Uh, voice to skull, for instance, you know, that could be triggered. Okay, now here's what these, these two uh, Christians say. They think that the higher goal of the Master Race Project is to create, and you, you know, you don't have to believe this, this is what they think, right. a Nephilim army by which Satan, who's the boss of this apparently, can defeat right. God in the final apocalypse. Of course, these guys know the Bible backwards and forwards, you know, quoting right. blah, blah, blah all the time. So Pastor Doug Riggs asserts that uh, there are now thousands of Nephilim, which is this reptilian race, which are existing now and infiltrated into our society. And what they ultimately want to do is replace humanity with this, this hybrid breed of superhumans. Meanwhile, Pastor Bailey, who knows the Bible backwards and forwards, says... Well, the Bible says there's, you know, God's got, got it over Satan by two to one in terms of the number of angels. In other words, when Satan fell, he took a third of the angels from heaven with him. So God's got the advantage. So therefore, Satan has been working like crazy using modern technology to create new forms of life, including robotic forms, MK Ultra, monarch, uh, super soldiers, and Nephilim warriors. So uh, he wants to win. In the final apocalypse, he right. knows God's coming back and he's going to have, have a big battle. And he knows his days are numbered, And but he, you know, very convinced he's going to win. So when you asked, you know, why do these guys do it? Right. You know, they, they, they know they're on the losing side. You know, the Henry Kissingers and, and right. uh, you know, all these Satanists, uh, George Soros, etc. Well, evidently, they think they might win. And if, if this is true. Uh, yeah. And they're working as hard as they can to win. Uh, now, a little more specifics here. And this is in one of my articles, I think, Appendix 12, in my 911nwo.com website, uh, under New World Religion. And uh, and I think I've imported that into my new gangstalkingmindcontrol.com website. Pastors Bailey and Riggs claim that the hybrid breeding project began with the establishment of the state of Israel in 1948, mm -hmm. and that the first Nephilim mother, who would then be 
a kind of a hybrid being between, I guess, one of the fallen angels or Satan himself and European royalty, would have been born in 1949 and then would have given birth to the first Nephilim children in 1962. And so now we've had a couple, three generations of Nephilim breeding in this project. Um, And that they suggest, and again, Doug Doug Riggs has quote-unquote deprogrammed many of the the victims, and he has learned, supposedly, that European royalty paid Joseph Mengele the angel of death, the Nazi angel of death, and other of these mind control crazy guys, uh, doctors, to program their children and put in these internal mental structures and paid them and paid to have them raised in surrogate families. So these could have been, say, you know, extra progeny of the of the European royalty and, well, whatever, Satan. Right. And uh, so he makes the point that uh, Mengele was a world class sorcerer, as well as being a PhD in anthropology and a monster and hence the programming was deeply satanic and it was actually done by high powers and principalities so the internal mental structures of these victims then uh, would actually be very similar around the world like Coride and Hammond said and they would be satanic structures yeah. and this would then turn them into satanic robots um, so uh, Riggs says he thinks there's been a coup and that Nephilim that is, these hybrid beings have replaced the human representatives of the 13 Illumini, Illuminati families on the Council of 13. So in a sense, Nephilim are now running the show. If you're wondering why the world seems so screwed up, well, that might be an explanation. Yeah. And uh, again, the, these guys, Riggs and Bailey, have deprogrammed many victims of SRA and MKUltra. And they conclude that these internal mental structures are f- that are in these programmed individuals are far beyond human intelligence. And they that these DID dissociative identity disorder structures are in fact demonic spiritual phenomenon. So um, the last point I'll make here is uh, Riggs and others believe that our nation and world are being prepared for a fraudulent disclosure event in which there is a scenario in which the Earth is attacked by bad aliens. Yes. And then we're going to be saved by the good aliens. And then the good aliens will say, hey, we created you in the first place. Yeah. So worship us. Yeah. You know, of course, all of which displaces God, you know, who is right. the creator of the universe. And uh, but in fact, the so-called aliens, the bad and the good would be the genetic hybrids, the Nephilim. And according to Riggs, the UFO craft they've been using for a long time for abductions, et cetera, are man-made. They're made in America. Sure they are. Uh, black technology with the military, et cetera. Uh, black military technologies. In fact, the Nazis had a, had a, had a flying saucer back during World War II, you know. So uh, what can we do now, you know, if they could make a flying saucer during World War II? Well, they, so, uh, we did a podcast about three months ago where I show that the uh, first uh, levitation craft was demonstrated to a major government, actually the U.S. government, and you won't guess the year. The, ge- the year is 1860. A wow. guy by the name of John Keeley flew around in a lighter-than-aircraft craft in 1860, demonstrated it to the U.S. government and uh, the U.S. military. They said they had no use for it and got rid of it, but I'll tell you, the uh, dark forces took it and so they've had levitation craft since at least 1860 and uh, I would go back even into uh, uh, the time of, of ancient Egypt with the levitation and the worship of the uh, of the beetle what's the the scarab beetle the scarab beetle underneath of its wings have uh, uh, components that allow it to levitate you know that bees levitate. They don't fly. They can't. They're not aerodynamic. So no, this levitation that, yeah. stuff is part of hum- humanity. And when they come down with a levitation craft, supposedly from Jupiter or some other place, it's human technology. We've had it for centuries. So it's all going to be a deception. It's all going to be um, a false like. Uh, 
Dr. Colston, I, I'm so uh, uh, pleased with where you've taken your research here and the depth and the breadth which you've taken this gang stalking thing to, to see how this whole thing, what this thing is about. We're uh, in a, a phase that the Satanists call the uh, externalization of the hierarchy, where we're going to know this stuff and we're going to know which way we're going to pick. We're going to know uh, which way to go. And it's all coming out now, and uh, they want it to come out, I believe. Yes, and I think that's a good point. Right. The externalization of the hierarchy, of course, is a term from Helen Blavatsky, who is one right. of the first New Agers, um, who you know founded the Theosophical Society you right. know, back in the 1800s. Uh, but the Bible has a similar uh, idea, and I can't quote it off the top of my head, which is all these secrets will be made known right. at the end times. And uh, so you kind of have the Satanists as a counterfeit, at least according to the Christian right. or worldview, of, of uh, what the Bible says. And, uh, you know, regardless of, you know, exactly what's happening, it does seem that the world leaders are using the Bible as a roadmap, you know. Right. And, <laughs> and so, you know, I was a Buddhist for a while, but, you know, all, all they really have to offer is to kind of escape. Right. Um, uh, you know, this this situation that they call samsara, which, of course, takes you out of your role as responsible citizen, right. responsible for actually, you know, the Constitution says that we citizens own the country, you know, right. and therefore we have the, the responsibility of making sure that our elected officials, you know, um, represent us well and accurately. Well, we've obviously fallen pretty far from that. Right. You know, <laughs> it's now our job to abolish or destroy the government or, or right. change it, alter it, according to uh, the Declaration of Independence. But, uh, yeah, you know, this whole uh, spiritual side, I believe, is is present. And uh, right. so we need to be able to function both on the political and the spiritual because the leaders of the world are operating on those two planes absolutely and uh, of the two i think the spiritual is the more uh, dominant and powerful uh you know so we need some understanding in that uh to understand the politics uh i'm afraid and see that's why most most american citizens especially agnostics and people you know would 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 not uh, would not admit any of this uh, spiritual side they want to talk about the politics, you know, right. was Trump versus Hillary, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and when it comes to something like you said about, uh, you know, the pizza gate and the right. spirit cooking and stuff like that, oh, that's nonsense, you know. Right. Well, it's not nonsense, you know, because, again, you go back and look at the record and these things keep recurring. Right. And there's evidence of this going back many, many centuries. Right. Uh, so the only way you can say it's nonsense is if, if you just ignore all this stuff. You're ignorant. Right. And, of course, that's more comfortable. In a, ignorance is bliss, perhaps, but it puts you in a very vulnerable spot, too. Right. Uh, so, yeah, now it's coming out, and I would say a large percentage of people will uh, will, will just want to push it back in the hole, you right. know, and not look at it, you know. But that's, that's the problem. That's the, that's the people we have to uh, try to get so that they can, they can wake up. It's the grand awakening. I think what's happening is uh, there's, a, there's a large percentage of us uh, that are um, seeing more and more what's going on. I think a lot of people are trapped in these. They've set up these little cul-de-sacs where as you start to awaken, uh, you get trapped in this new age idea or or this idea or you know the answer is ayahuasca or the answer um, you got to keep waking up you can't you can't go back into one of these corners and uh, yeah I've got the answer now no it's going to be more and more we're going to learn more and more and it's going to blow our minds every month it's going to blow our minds actually that's uh, Mindy and I, the way we live is if we haven't really learned something that's exploded a paradigm in a month, we think, well, what are we doing here? Because <laughs> we, you've got to you've got to uh, learn new stuff, and I think a real important part is admit that you're wrong. Ah, I was wrong about that because now I know this and this and this. And I think if we keep in the position where we're waking up and we admit that. 
we can admit that we were wrong last month about that or years ago. Um, we get criticized with past podcasts we made two years. I thought you believed this. Well, yeah, we do, but back then we didn't. We've changed, right. you know. Uh, got to be willing to do that. You've got to be willing to adapt as more information, new insights come in, of course. Otherwise, you're, you're just kind of dead, you know. If, if you're not learning, I think you've already kind of died. Right. Um, I, th I think really it's important. And the reason why I brought up this thing about the satanic ritual abuse MK Ultra, number one, I'm trying to get a handle on numbers. You know, right. how many how many people are being gang stalked now? What's the distribution right. around the world? Um, and uh, then you start to look at the actual numbers or the estimated numbers of the people who are victims of SRA and MK Ultra, and you can kind of you know do a comparison. Yeah, and both programs are worldwide. You know, I mean, this is this is not what the U.S. Constitution. This is not what George Washington envisioned for America. No. <laughs> you know, when he said, "Make no f entangling foreign alliances." You know, right. he he. You know, th those uh, founding fathers didn't didn't want to rule the world. You know, and yet this this empire uh, role has been foisted upon us really taking it over from the British at World War II. Uh -huh. uh, and, and all the secret documents, uh, you know, according to Fletcher Prouty, talked about moving towards one world, even in World War II, at the end of World War II. And so that's what our political and military leadership wanted to do, was move towards conquest of the entire world. Right. Well, on whose behalf? Not on right. my behalf. No. I don't want to conquer Ecuador. Yeah. I want Ecuador to be Ecuador, you know? Yeah. I don't want my government, my military, my CIA, my NSA, to to uh, destroy the people of Ecuador, right? As they, you know, have done in the past, along with you know Vietnam and right. many many other countries, you know. Uh, so we've lost control of our government. Um, I think. Uh, let me read you a quote here that I've got right on the front of my uh, of my uh, gang stalking mind control dot com website. I put a bunch of pertinent quotes, and uh, this is from. CIA uh, scientist and researcher, uh, Dr. Robert Duncan, who wrote the book Soul Catcher. Uh, and this is in a, another YouTube called The Invisible War, 21st Century Targeting. He says, uh, uh, this is federal, this is classified, and this has been done by the CIA for a long time. He's giving advice to targets, TIs, along with other agencies experimenting on the citizens. And this is worldwide. There is no way any agency or government can possibly admit this level of assassination and torture without a complete collapse. So know what you are dealing with. This is a this is going to take a long time to be solved. Okay. So then I have ex ex FBI, ex NSA, ex DHS people making similar statements. You know, saying you know they did it. Uh, there's an article that I think is. Uh, uh, just come out in uh, in Remel uh, D's uh, website, Everyday Concerns, and I'm just kind of kind of paste together a couple of her very very uh, rich sentences. She says, "Secret high tech surveillance, targeting, and assault are being used covertly in today's radiation policed and neuro policed state, USA and worldwide." Blacklisted individuals, that's the targets, that's us, are being used like lab rats for criminal, non-consensual, military, Navy, U.S. Air Force directed energy weapons operation testing and training, as well as non-consensual, covert, CIA, DIA, DARPA, NSA, DOJ, DHS, neuro experimentation in behavior modification and deliberately disappeared from public view. The end result is treasonous secret military subjugation. I'll repeat that, secret wow. military subjugation of entire communities, neighborhoods, towns, or in US military jargon, military operations other than war, capital M-O-O-T-W, asymmetrical warfare, stealth warfare, information warfare, information operations, special operations, special warfare, psychological warfare. Okay, this is what those trillions of dollars go on to the intelligence, military, industrial,
complex, the corporatocracy, the Northrop Grumman's and all that right. stuff, you know, SAIC. Um, we can go down the line. InfraGuard now is uh, run by uh, ex FBI guys, you know, to target individuals. Th this is where all this money has gone into secret stealth warfare against the domestic population of the world. And uh, I think that this term, secret military subjugation, is very appropriate. I think we've got spies throughout now, right. our little towns. I live in a tiny town called Crestone Baca. And, and, and I wrote a long series of articles uh, starting in 2011 when I retired um, to try to find out if, uh, uh, if indeed Crestone Baca is the Vatican City of the New World Order, as Tom DeWeese of the American Policy Committee, a conservative think tank, suggested back in a 1996 speech. And uh, so I've written, you know, many, many, many articles and pages and appendices uh, try to answer that question. And this turned into an expose of the New World Religion, and that turned into an expose of mind control and cults. And then I realized I was being gang stalked, and that turned into my gang stalking mind control cults.com website. So all of this is coming from trying to understand what's going on in my little town of Crestone Baca, Colorado, right. which was founded in large part by a guy named Maurice Strong, who's a friend of the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds, to set up this interfaith new age religion here in our tiny little town. So we've got the front cover story, which is, you know, all these peace, love, wonderful, right. friendly, we're all harmony and let's all get together and merge into, you know, in a big happy face. Uh, and then you've got the reality, which is we got spies all over the place and there's lots of gang stalking going around here to try and drive people out of the community. Why? Because we're out in a rural area and they want to get right. people out of rural areas in Agenda 21, which Marie right. Strong also wrote. And they want to do whatever they're doing here, which I think has to do with these experiments. I mean, you could say we're not a safe house. We're a safe community. And spies come here in between assignments. They do experiments on guinea pigs here. Right. You know, you know, maybe let's do, uh, you know, use electromagnetic technologies and see if we can model what happens to somebody's brain if they're meditating in a right. deep, you know, whatever, alpha state or whatever. And let's see if we can then, you know, get the signature on that and then we'll put it in the computer and then we'll put it in the next person, give them instant enlightenment or whatever. Right. I mean, all that stuff would be, you know, in the realm of the plausible. Right. I can't say that's for sure. Right. Certainly what's happened here. But if you've got a little controlled Petri dish like this, 1,500 people, 35 different spiritual groups, nonprofits from all over the world, and they're all doing their spiritual things, supposedly, at least some of them, uh, perfect experiment, you know, or series of experiments for the cryptocracy, the rule by secrecy, right. and then come in with the CIA, the NSA, the FBI, the DHS, the local law enforcement, so we got the cover story and we got the reality, just like global warming, man caused global right. warming, the cover story, then the reality, geoengineering, you right. know, and we got the uh, 911, the cover story. Oh, yeah, Osama bin Laden did it. Then we got the reality. Oh, world conquest <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> with, a, with, a, with a worldwide uh, police surveillance state and wars, smashing countries, dis destroying countries one after another uh, to fit into the global system. You know, so uh, again, it's taken me a long time to try to understand what's going. It's it's just kind of a fluke of nature or God or whatever that I've moved from these one subject to the next to try to understand the larger picture. And so this has brought me to gang stalking, mind control, and cults as one as one technique or a series of techniques of the ruling elite to subjugate right. uh, our, our world. Yeah, I think it's a it's it seems to me it's a basic war against humanity, God's creation, God's uh, I don't know you could call it the jewel in the whole world, uh, God's creation, humanity. They want to destroy that and replace it with I don't know some some kind of engineered species, AI connected uh, thing that. So I I don't know. It's it's just really. Uh, it's really interesting when you go deep. Everything you said, you know, I, I used to follow the uh, the alien abductions, and there was a guy named Dr. Jacobson. I can't remember his first name. What's his? Steve Jacobson? I, maybe not. 
but uh, Dr. Jacobson, and he got deeper and deeper into the abduction program, which is, of course, everybody knows by now that's a military thing, and it's a breeding program. And he, he was horrified by what he found, that they were breeding these this different species that... Uh, that's There's a tie-in. Yeah. There's a tie-in to the hybrid breeding program, just like Doug Riggs said. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's so interesting. We were, I was with a bunch of friends the other day, and this may be a little off the topic, but it might relate. And they were talking about uh, there was an old movie in the '70s called uh, West World, Western World, and it starred Yul Brynner. And Yul Brynner, uh, Western World was a uh, well, it was like a game park where people would go and they would be in a Western and they could shoot people, but the, uh, the people were all AI. They were all robots, okay? So they'd go and they'd, they'd interact. Well, I guess they're bringing that back as a TV series. I, we don't watch TV, so I don't know. But it's really interesting if you put, if you put what's happening to us in the context of, uh, of, of working with these non-humans, this... There's, let's say there's, let's say the angels are AI, because they are inferior to humans, and they are, uh, according to uh, uh, John Lash, they're the archons. They're uh, uh, they're inorganic, and uh, they're AI, and then you have this AI species that they're they're producing to interact with us, thousands of them. We're kind of a, an, a human species in between, kind of fighting for survival uh, with, you know, people on both sides, gang stalking us, uh, a satanic ritual abuse and using that force against us. It's a, I don't know, it just, that just came to me as, as well as I was listening to that and listening to you. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of forces. It's not just human beings working against human beings, but they've also set up these uh, hybrid or AI or whatever they are, transhumans. Uh, and it's a, it's a war against uh, the divine creation of humanity. I agree. You know, there is a group called uh, World Cash, uh, Citizens Against Covert Harassment. And now they've uh, headed by a Swede named Magnus Olsen. And, uh, and then they've set up chapters in each of the different nations, including U.S. Cash. Um, or Catch, I don't know how they wanted to, to, to pronounce that. But uh, if you go online and you listen to some of their stuff, uh, they're very, very sophisticated on this. So we are... You know, we being the targeted individual community, we are starting to get uh, organized and uh, they've had uh, international conferences maybe every other year for the last several years around the world. And uh, but I think then I, I think they're legitimate. Uh, but then there's other groups that, you know, might be highly infiltrated or even run by the opposition, right. just like the 911 movement. Uh, right after 911, totally infiltrated by all kinds of government agents, uh, and the truth movement then was neutralized uh, by these people who know how to neutralize groups. Right. And so we, uh, these people tend to come in and they take over, and then they set up fights between factions, and they, you know, just like they do with other countries. You right. know? And uh, it's the same old, same old, you know. Uh, so this is why I've always pretty much operated independently. I have gone right. to 911 conferences, but I've never joined in. You know, I've always right. been an independent researcher. And uh, but there are, uh, as I understand, targeted individuals are getting together and, uh, you know, by Facebook and phone and whatever and sharing their stories and uh, starting to you know, understand what's going on. Um, so we're kind of the canaries in the coal mine. Um, right. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that some of us can turn into eagles and, uh, you know, fly above it, see the big picture and then and then attack, you know, because we're up against this 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 demonic uh, system. Uh, and I think our best weapon is truth Absolutely. Uh, rather than, say, mortars or uh, uh, you know, shells or, uh, you know, uh, weapons of our own. Uh, the truth is enough, you know. Right. All we need is the truth to become disseminated. And I do believe in God. I do believe that, uh, you know, we're not the whole story. We're not the whole right. resistance right. here. 
uh, we tap into that uh, connection, and uh, not only do we have much greater protection, but we also have divine um, uh, assistance, inspiration, etc. Right. So this is why I think a lot of TIs are are forced, especially through the tremendous suffering that they're enduring with these 24-7 right. uh, electronic attacks. And I hear about these from other TIs. Uh, some of them, you know, very, very forced to, uh, you know, find their spiritual uh, right. uh, center and stay close to that, you know. Uh, and I think this is true. I think there is an eternity at stake, you know, for right. each of us. Um, and uh, we are kind of held accountable for our actions. Right. That said, I think forgiveness is in the is in the right. system if if we're willing to repent and you know right. recalibrate, try again. You know, we all we all sin, but uh, I think that uh, you know uh, this 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 uh, what's happening is very much a spiritual war, and uh, we know uh, kind of we've read to the end of the book. <laughs> right. We know the good guys win in the end, you know. Yeah. And uh, but meanwhile, there's going to be some terrible times, and there are right. terrible times. I think you can make the case that we're very we're right. right in it, you know. So. Well, waking yeah. up is very hard to do, and I think a lot of times, most times in my doctoral work, uh, the dilemma-based model was the thing that spo spurred more development, more awakening, more learning, more growth was dilemmas, and we certainly are faced with a lot of dilemmas now. And so I think it's waking a lot of people up. I mean, if we're fat and happy, we're not going anywhere, but we're not fat and happy now. We're being attacked, we're being re-engineered, and uh, we're going down a hard road. And uh, I really uh, love the research you're doing. I can't, I mean, I know that you're a fantastic researcher. I've known that ever since I heard you on Red Ice Radio. Uh, and getting deep into this subject, which I think is, hearing you talk today, this is the core issue, isn't it? This is where we need to buckle down. This is the line in the sand. This is where we need to go. Yes, I, I totally agree. And we need people like you, Paul. You have a PhD you. in psychology. You, you, you're in a better position to understand this system that we're, yeah. you know, that is attacking us and to help people, um, survive and then who knows maybe even counterattack some you know right. first first we have to figure out how to survive you know which is going to mean you know a lot of the ti's are talking about shielding you know from the electromagnetic yeah. weaponry which is hitting them day in and day out you know and they're talking about products like reflectix you know which have a certain right. amount of metal and a corrugated surface that can be used to bounce these off other people are talking about you know taking diatomaceous earth which i guess maybe protects the innards a little bit um so we've got to we've got to protect ourselves technologically from this technological assault. We've got to protect ourselves spiritually, and then somehow or another, despite the fact that it seems that the opposing forces have an unlimited budget, right. somehow we have to organize uh, ourselves and and equip ourselves with enough knowledge so that we can make some some counterattacks, you know, right. like St. John St. Clair Acque had this lawsuit against uh, uh, NSA. It was thrown out of court. But in the process, he put together the story and it's documented. It's on the Internet. Uh, that was 1992. We need obviously updates of that. You know, right. uh, we've got Dr. Robert Duncan. So uh, he's ex CIA uh, guy who worked with these technologies. He was right. on the other side. So. Um, these Mike German was a counterterrorism FBI specialist. He was on the other side. Karen Stewart right. was NSA specialist. She was on the other side. These people are waking up and they can help us, you know. Absolutely. So we need the tools of these experts. Um, and there are good hearted people in all of these organizations right. that are swept up, I think, you know, and oh gosh, you know, if I stay in another five years, I'll get my retirement and <laughs> maybe I better not be a whistleblower because then maybe I won't right. get my retirement. You know, all these all these factors, you know, but uh, I, I think knowledge and, and uh, the line in the sand idea is very important. I think, you know, uh, um, respecting other respecting the autonomy of other human beings to have free will, respecting the sovereignty of other nations right. to conduct their own affairs. These are 
you know, these are this is bottom line uh, right. kinds of uh, of uh, uh, you know acknowledgments, and yet the CIA never did respect the sovereignty Absolutely. of other nations, and they don't respect the sovereignty of individuals. Exactly. Um, it's in all their documents and in their programs. Uh, Jose Delgado, the guy who invented the demo receiver, you know, electronic mind control and was able to stop a bull in the ring, you know, right, by zapping right. it. The guy from Spain, you know, he says, you know, people might think that they, you know, have a right to free will, but they really don't. They don't really see the big picture. Right. Right. I mean, these guys, you know, <laughs> right. you couldn't ask for a, a bigger monster. You That's know? right. That's right. That's right. Well, you got you're not going to we're not going to beat them by money because this. What did you say? Nine trillion. That's only what the what the taxpayers give them. They have uh, human trafficking profits. They have drug traf tra trafficking profits. So I think fighting them on this level with money, we're not going to do it. We're looking into something down here called bioacoustics, where it looks at human beings as being energy waves and affecting the energy waves with sounds. I remember a couple, uh, six months ago, you and I were talking about uh, producing music that would be in harmony with, with the earth. You know, they changed something in the 1940s so that, so that the music we listen to every day is a little bit different. So I, uh, I was explaining that to a friend of mine who was very much into uh, medicine. And so she looked into this thing called bioacoustics, and you can Google it probably. Uh, and there's a woman who uh, she can hear from your voice what's deficient in you and make sounds that fill it up. So you don't, so you don't need drugs, you don't need, you need anything like that. And it's looking at human beings as something more than a, than a meat bag. We're, we are something more. We're a divine, we're a spiritual creature. We're an energy being. And uh, on that level, I don't think we're beatable. Uh, I, I'm so glad you mentioned that. I mean, uh, you know, a lot of the psychological, the history of, of the field of psychology, you know, going back to Wilhelm once, I think, you know, back uh -huh. in Germany and Pavlov back in, in Russia, you know, look at human beings as kind of an input output machine as, as a piece of dead meat, as you say, as, as something that, uh, whose individuality and divine, uh, free will uh, mean nothing. In other uh -huh. words, just just something to be controlled. And this, I'm afraid, has been uh, kind of the model, the mental assumption of much of that field, uh, which has brought us to this condition. So, you know, as with computer models, you know, garbage in, garbage out, bad assumptions, bad conclusions. To, so to reinvigorate the whole study of, you know, human behavior and psychology and, you know, everything with with the old idea that we are made in the image of God, uh -huh. that we are divine uh, participating uh, in, in uh, God's creation, that he's in charge, the creator, but he created something extremely priceless and special in each one of us, each of whom is different. Thank God, thank God. you know, and respecting that, that, you know, that, that seems like the most basic of all things to agree on. And yet the, our ruling elite uh, threw that out sure centuries they ago. They had to. It's important to know that, you know, it's important yeah. to know that they don't share our belief That's that right. human beings are, uh, you know, divine and, and made in God's image. Right. Exactly. Exactly. You know, I think that uh, what we've uncovered is about six more podcasts. Uh, <laughs> That's fine with this, me. I would like to go into the the actual technologies at some point with you, if that's all right. I still haven't kind of systematically put that on a post, but I would like to go through the patents, the years, uh, the experiments, the inventors, and say, okay, this is this is where this comes from, and this is how it's used now. Uh, again, this is the information that PIs need to know. I think it's very important. Uh, but I think if we make this too much longer, nobody will. Uh, yeah, will, I think will it's good listeners. time. Yeah. So uh, why don't you uh, why don't you sum up and then we'll uh, uh, we'll say goodbye. Yeah. Well, Paul, I just want to thank you and Mindy uh, for doing this, and this is our third interview on this on this topic or our third conversation. As you say, I I would like to keep it going, 
<clears throat> as I learn more, you know, from my research and from my actual being out there as a TI, uh, I think, uh, you know, we can kind of understand this this uh, diabolical program better. And, and, and I think you and I both agree that, you know, this is the, the line in the sand that we have to draw. Uh, we we have to we have to uh, uh, fight with every uh, ounce of of intelligence and uh, uh, goodwill and uh, you know fiber that we have uh, against this pernicious program, which could mean the end of humanity as we know it. Right, right. Diabolical is a real sweet way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a real yeah. compliment. Thank you very yeah. much, uh, Dr. Kallstrom. It's been a pleasure. And uh, we'll get back to the subject real soon. Take care. Thank you, Dr. Marco. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>